As a Christian bodybuilder who is now married, this is how I rewired my over-sexualized brain and defeated an ongoing problem I had with lust. And I'm gonna teach you how to do the same in a challenging but eternally rewarding three-step process. So I've been in the gym for 10 years and I've been competing as a natural bodybuilder for three. And while this fitness journey was happening, I met a girl. Her name was Betsy. Also, Betsy competed in her first bodybuilding show this year. She's a queen. When Betsy and I first started dating, one of the biggest struggles that we faced was my need and desire for the attention of women and an ongoing problem with lust that I was facing. That was our first challenge, like day one of dating. However, by the grace of God and the three tips that I'm gonna mention in this video, I was able to train my mind and God redeemed this struggle in my life and blessed Betsy and I with a marriage of over a year and a half now. So tip number one in the fight against lust and the battle for temptation would be check your inputs, be proactive. What are you viewing on social media? What podcasts are you listening to? What movies? What conversations are you entertaining with your friends? Because the second that we give in to these micro decisions or justifying watching a slightly sexual Instagram reel or TikTok, it gives our brain a little bit of ammo to fester on it for the rest of the day. And then when night comes or when we're not as strong, we already have those thoughts in our brain and it definitely aids in falling prey to lust or temptation. So just be proactive. With fitness and gym culture becoming so popular on social media, we need to be aware that content that gets attention gets rewarded. And a lot of content that I see on social media in the fitness space is sexual, and that's the content that gets the most attention. And when our fleshly desires get the best of us and we begin to lust after these videos, that social media platform we are using recognizes that we stopped and we watched this video. Then it feeds us more and more of this same content till we can't escape it. And this type of content is not just in the fitness space. It's all over these platforms. It's all over social media. Social media has made access to this sexual content easier than ever. And as someone who's in the fitness space, I have to be incredibly careful with who I follow and what content I'm consuming. And this isn't just for social media. It has to do with movies, podcasts, media, anything, music. We have to be so mindful of what we are feeding our souls. So Betsy and I are headed to Vermont later today to see my uncle's cabin that he just bought. And I'm in charge of packing uh, and she's in charge of just tidying up the house before we leave. But we have an Australian shepherd that is incredibly restless and energetic. That's gonna have to sit in the car for about 13 hours. So it's gonna be a really exciting day. So we've officially made it to, uh, we made it to Vermont. Yeah. It's beautiful, it's cold, the foliage is insane. Betsy and I went on some hikes. We um, watched some movies, watched a little bit of football. It's been really, really nice. It's been, a, it's been a great time. Step two in avoiding temptation and avoiding lust, and one of the most important is take every thought captive and confess, tell people, don't keep it a secret. James 5.16 says in the Bible, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you might be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So if we inevitably, when we inevitably fall prey to some sort of temptation or we're overcome by lust, the worst thing that we can do is keep it a secret. The worst thing that we can do is keep it to ourselves and try to fight this fight on our own. There was a point in my life where I kept a lot of, a lot of sin, a lot of hurt, and a lot of shame trapped in my heart for about a year and a half, and it literally changed my personality. Like harboring all that darkness in myself, it made me so insecure. It magnified all the other sins. It made me prone to so many more sins because I was literally keeping shame just tucked away. And the second that I, I remember I was driving to the airport with my buddy and I was like, hey man, I really got to tell you something. And I confessed these sins and confessed this shame that I've been holding on to for so long. And it was the most freeing feeling in the world. It made the encounters of sins like the one I was holding in my heart so much easier to combat, so much easier to deal with and navigate because I knew there was someone in my corner that I could go to immediately. Also, I can't tell you how freeing it is and the bond that you create with a brother after you confess something like this because everyone has felt it but most people are scared to talk about it and the second you confess it and the second that you create that just mutual bond of like hey we're in this together brother like i'm struggling you're struggling let's fight it together there is this like beautiful new layer of friendship that happens and it is so exciting 
Just tell a friend. It is, uh, it's time to go here in Vermont. It's our, uh, what time is it? 3.45? 3.45. 3.50. Betsy was snoring last night. You were snoring last night. We were both snoring last night. We have 10 hours of driving ahead of us. It's going to be okay. It is, uh, it's time to hit some back. Back and maybe a little bit of biceps. I think that's what I'm feeling. Just dropped Betsy off at the airport. So we're solo dolo right now. Lately, I have been actually logging my workouts, uh, being very meticulous about logging sets and reps. Because uh, I want to take it more seriously. I feel like I've been kind of on cruise control with my workouts and training. And I have felt a lack of motivation because I haven't feel like I've been, I don't feel like I've been progressing. And that's changing this week. So I did legs at the beginning of the week. I hit chest two days ago. I took yesterday off. We're hitting back and buys today. And I'm going to log everything, log the weight, log the sets and reps, obviously, uh, and just get dialed in on it. Did pull ups, uh, rows, flat pull downs. Everything felt really good. I don't know if it was the pre workout or, or what, but good contraction. Not doing a ton of exercises, just like two and a half to three exercises per body part. Finishing off with some biceps and do some cardio. Feels good. Feels really, really good. I'm out here on a walk, Mr. Chester Man. Um, I've been prayerful about about this whole video, but specifically about this final part and just how to encourage and exhort you and to remind you of God's goodness and God's grace. And just to encourage, like I said, and, and comfort that this is a struggle for a lot of young men and it's a long process, a long redemptive process. And God is going to transform your life. If you give it to God, if you seek God, if you pray, knowing that he will answer. Um, and if you control the variables, if you control the external outputs, as well as control the internal outputs. Um, I reached out to a spiritual mentor just kind of for advice on this final part. Um, and he made a great case that we can control the external. We can control what we're watching, what we're listening to what we see but the majority of it comes from the internal from our heart are we do we have this um this thirst for god this thirst for righteousness and getting to know him more um and seeking his goodness and learning more about his character and just st spending time in prayer with him that pleasure of that communion with God is so much greater than smaller pleasures that are momentary. Um, and I thought that was really, really good. The more we grow in our desire for the Lord, the more we grow in our knowledge of him and our relationship with him, small, like I said, small temptations diminish. Um, and we're not as prone to seek out instant gratification. So just understanding that the more we grow in our relationship with the Lord, the lesser the temptation. You watching this video, you taking steps to defeat lust, you taking steps to control your purity and control your mind and, and grow in your relationship with the Lord. Not only are you fixing the present and, and future problems, but um, you're correcting some generational sin that you could have. Um, there could be this sin in your family that you are now giving to God and you are working through and you're battling through and it's gonna impact your children. It's gonna impact your future kids. If you have some now, it's gonna impact them now. Um, it is such a beautiful responsibility that we have in this moment, um, in our current life, while we are still able, 
mentally and physically to combat lust, to defeat the ensnares that the devil can get us in. Um, bring it to the Lord. Pray. Seek accountability. Watch your inputs. And just enjoy God's goodness, God's glory, and seek pleasure in Him uh, foremost. My prayer for you watching this video is you take every day as it comes, you take practical steps and you watch your inputs to avoid and being proactive with lust, that you seek accountability, that you take every thought captive and you bring it to the Lord. And that if you're not involved with your local church, get involved with your local church, get to a point in a small group with a couple guys that you can confide in, develop this relationship that there's vulnerability and that the healing begins. Um, and if you are someone that has already overcome to lust, overcame lust and temptation, that you reach out to someone that has been on your heart. You pray for other young men uh, and young women who maybe struggle with this, uh, or older men, all ages. Thank you so much for watching. Um, see you in the next one.